Hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Backup and Restore for Operator-Driven Applications with Valero. I'm Dave Smith Uchida. I'm the Valero Architect at VMware. Contributing to this was Nolan Brubaker, who's the Valero Tech Lead. So a little introduction to Valero. Valero is a Kubernetes backup application. It's open source. It backs up our Kubernetes resources to an object store. It also can snapshot and backup persistent volumes. So you can get a complete backup of both your Kubernetes resources and the data that's controlled by Kubernetes. Uh, Valero supports running, supports Kubernetes on just about every cloud, uh, including vSphere, AWS, et cetera. Uh, inside of VMware, we're part of the Tanzu organization and uh, Valero is integrated uh, as the Tanzu Mission Controls Data Protection uh, feature. We're also integrated into Dell EMC Power Protect, which is a commercially available uh, backup application. And Red Hat OpenShift uses this for both backup and migration within their product. So today we're talking a little bit about um, the challenges associated with operator-driven applications. And operator-driven applications are um, applications that have what we call an operator associated with them, which enables the control installation management of the application via Kubernetes resources. So the operator itself is actually is itself a Kubernetes resource, uh, Kubernetes application that runs and responds to the resources. Um, the operator creates, modifies, terminates the application based on the resources state. This simplifies the installation and the management of applications. So um, what it lets you do is put a lot more expertise into the operator's code. So for example, you can say things like, I need a database with you know, X amount of storage and Y performance. And the operator can make decisions about, for example, if it's a distributed database, how many pods to split this across, what kind of storage classes to use, um, how the networking can be configured, basically anything you know, that can be controlled in here can be done by the operator. And this makes it much more attractive for running applications rather than simply installing the YAMLs because if you just install the YAMLs, you have to go through and edit things to get the right configuration. Whereas the operator will actually do a lot of the work of determining what the right configuration is for you. So the operator model um, poses challenges for backup and restore um, because it's um, the, a number of the Kubernetes resources that we're backing up are actually actively being controlled by the operator. They're not simply things that were created via static YAMLs. And <clears throat> what happens is the operator will be actively reconciling the resources that are supporting the resource that you wanted. So um, for example, if you have a database, you may say, um, you may create a record that says Postgres database with specifications in there. The operator is creating pods as in a reconciliation loop. So it's looking at what do you want and trying to get the system into that state. And we run into issues here, especially is on the restore, because if the uh, resources are not restored in the correct order, we actually run into race conditions where the operator is trying to reconcile to a state that as we're trying to restore to a state. And this ordering of resource creation is currently hard to define. Um, another thing that would help would be if we could simply pause the cluster, but Kubernetes actually doesn't let us do that at the moment. So one example of this that we tried was the uh, Zalando Postgres operator. And this has a number of nice features and we'd like to be able to take advantage of more of these. Um, so the Zalando op operator actually has its own backup and restore capabilities that the operator provides. It uses a, um, a thing with Postgres called wall-e, which uh, does write ahead log uh, shipping and um, snapping in order to um, back up the state of the database. And this is, this is great. Um, unfortunately, the way it's set up right now, we can't control this easily from Postgres. So you can set a schedule inside of the Zalando operator to back up on a schedule, but if you want it to connect to the rest of your resources, that isn't available at the moment. When it comes time, so if you, um, 
want to restore the database, you have to go in and manually restore the database by itself. It's not, th this mechanism uh, doesn't integrate with something like Valera, which is doing all of your other resources and potentially multiple databases together. Um, so that's, that's something that we'd like to see, we'd like to be able to take advantage of in the future. At the moment, what we can do is we can back up the, the Kubernetes resources and we can snapshot all of the volumes for the database. And this works. Um, we do run into some issues on restore um, because sometimes the, there's a race condition between the operator and the state of the database, where, for example, we've, brought, we've restored the database, we've restored the pods, but the, um, the database hasn't gotten into a running state before the operator starts reconciling. This will happen, you know, maybe 40% of the time we've seen in testing. Um, the other 60% of the time, everything happens nicely and the database comes back up and the operator reconciles with it properly. So it works, but it could definitely be improved. So we'd like to uh, integrate the internal um, backup and restore mechanisms that Zolando provides. We'd also like to avoid things like these, these errors that you wind up having to ignore. Another example, oops. Another example is the, uh, the cluster API management cluster. And this is, you can actually think of this as an operator that manages or creates Kubernetes clusters based on resources that are created in the management cluster. So you, you create a record like, cluster, you create a cluster record and the operator, the CAPI, talks to the infrastructure provider, such as AWS or vSphere, and allocates all the resources that you need there in order to run your cluster and then installs Kubernetes and gets it all set up. So it does things like allocate virtual machines, uh, virtual networks, storage pools, et cetera. Um, so right now we have the ability to back up the contents of the management cluster, all of the, um, the records there, all the YAMLs, um, but not the external resources that it's connected to. And on restore right now, um, typically what we're looking at is like a loss of the management cluster itself, where we need to uh, restore the management cluster, but we'd like it to adopt back the existing resources. So for example, an EC2 instance or a vSphere virtual machine has a uh, unique ID there. And what we would like is to bring the management cluster back up and have the records in the management cluster reconnect with the resources that exist and not, for example, um, generate new virtual machines and create a new cluster. We want to reconcile and connect to the original cluster that exists. So again, we've run into race conditions here um, where, for example, like if the virtual machine resource gets get restored after the cluster resources, new virtual machines get allocated. And our current ordering in Valero basically does things in alphabetic order. So um, it pretty much guarantees this will happen. Uh, in order to get around this, what we're doing currently is we're pausing reconciliation. There's a CAPI mechanism to do this, that um, at backup time, you as the user will manually set this, back it up, and then after the backup finishes, you unpause the cluster and recon the reconciliation loop restarts. And so when we do the restore, the, um, the paused flag is set in the backup. And this keeps the uh, it keeps Cappy from starting its reconciliation loop. So this works, but it's manual. What we'd like to do is we'd like to have things like this pause, if that's the right thing to do. This should automatically be triggered by the backup and the store. Um, we'd also like to get the backup and restore of um, the clusters managed by the management cluster. That should become something that we can handle automatically. So we can say backup management cluster and everything underneath of it. So those are some directions we wanna take it in. So that's kind of the state of the art at the moment and uh, inside of Valero and inside of Tanzu and vSphere, we're looking at ways to make this experience better. We think the operator driven application is a critical uh, important way for people to consume applications on Kubernetes. We wanna make the data protection part of this really strong. So um, one of these, one, one of the directions we're trying to move in is to involve the operators more in backup and restore. 
as we saw with, for example, like the Zalando operator, exposing the backup and restore capabilities of the operator to an application, to a backup application like Valero, will actually give us a much better experience than trying to uh, backup the application without the use of the operator. And so part of doing that is we are currently in the process of defining data protection APIs, uh, such as Snapshot and Create, through a project called Astrolay. And that's going to be something we'll be talking more about in Valero. Um, and then the operator can start to implement these things where it can do things like quiesce the database or not quiesce the database. It can, it can control the order of resources being created. So we'll be able to mark things like, hey, this uh, persistent volume or this pod actually belongs to the operator. So let it uh, control how, how and when those things get recreated. Um, we can start to use different backup formats, such as the write-ahead log, the WALL-E stuff from Zalando, rather than simply uh, snapshotting the disks. Uh, depending on the application, we may be able to get smarter quiescing or no need for quiescing as part of the backup. And this will also allow us to do things like control external resources, such as RDS databases that can be controlled via an operator. So thanks for listening. Um, we have, uh, you can join us at the Valero site. Uh, we have Valero, as I said, is a GitHub, is a open source project. You can visit our GitHub. And Astrolabe is currently under construction, but it's available on GitHub as well. Thank you very much.